Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Lucy Letby? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Lucy Letby was born on January 4, 1990, in Hereford, England. She was an only child. Lucy attended the University of Chester to study nursing and worked as a student nurse. She graduated in 2011 and started working at the Countess of Chester Hospital. Lucy was assigned to the neonatal unit. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. In 2015 and 2016, the hospital where Lucy worked was plagued by an unusually high mortality rate in the neonatal unit. Consultants were brought in to conduct medical reviews and found that the death rate was dramatically elevated. The unit had recorded 15 fatalities, more than double its annual average. The consultants noticed that Lucy Letby was on the unit when several of the unexplained deaths occurred, but they didn't have any direct evidence that she had caused the deaths. Unable to figure out what was going on, the hospital made a decision in July of 2016 to no longer accept premature infants born before 32 weeks. Another review was carried out in November of 2016, but this one also failed to identify the cause of the high mortality. Lucy was advised that the consultants suspected her involvement in the deaths she filed a grievance in response. In January of 2017, two reviews concluded that Lucy had not engaged in any wrongdoing. The consultants were forced to apologize to Lucy. She was allowed to return to work on the unit immediately, but she never did. In March of 2017, the consultants advised the hospital that it was time to notify the police. After conducting an investigation, the police came to believe that Lucy was responsible for several murders and attempted murders. After being arrested and released twice, once in 2018 and once in 2019, Lucy was arrested for a third and final time on November 11, 2020. She was charged with seven counts of murder and 15 counts of attempted murder. Lucy's trial started on October 10, 2022. The Crown argued that Lucy killed and attempted to kill several infants using a variety of methods, including injecting air, poisoning with insulin, overfeeding, and attacking them with medical instruments. Lucy's defense argued that many factors contributed to the deaths. They claimed that several physicians engaged in a conspiracy against Lucy. There was a lot of information for the jury to consider. For example, 300 witnesses testified there were 32,000 pages of exhibits, and the jury was provided a 25-page glossary of medical terms. The jury started deliberations on July 10, 2023, and started returning verdicts on August 8, 2023. When the final verdict was reached on August 18, all the verdicts were made public. Lucy was found guilty on seven counts of murder. Her victims were five premature boys and two newborn girls. She was also found guilty of seven counts of attempted murder, which involved six victims. Lucy was found not guilty on two counts of attempted murder. The jury could not reach a verdict on six counts of attempted murder, which involved five alleged victims. Lucy Letby is facing up to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few items that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, there's not much question that Lucy is guilty. The excess mortality was significantly elevated when Lucy was on the neonatal unit. When Lucy was removed from the unit in July 2016, the safety record improved dramatically. Since that time, the unit has cared for over 2,500 babies and recorded only one fatality. They were caring for infants who were at less risk from the time that Lucy was there but that is still a significant difference. 
The police constructed a chart showing how Lucy was on duty during every incident. She is the only factor that connected to all the murders and to all the attempted murders. In addition, Lucy wrote a note which could be considered a confession. This brings me to item number two. After Lucy was arrested for the first time in July 2018, the police searched her residence and found a handwritten note. Here is a summary of that note. Lucy wrote, quote, There are no words. I am an awful person. I pay every day for that, unquote. She talked about how she could not breathe or focus. She had overwhelming fear and panic, and she was alone and scared. Lucy complained that she would never get married or have children. She would never know what it was like to have a family. Lucy wrote, quote, I don't deserve to live. I did this. Why me? I killed them on purpose because I'm not good enough for them, and I am a horrible, evil person, unquote. She argued that the world was better off without her. At the end of the note, in all capital letters, Lucy wrote, quote, I am evil. I did this. Unquote. This note appears to have been written when Lucy was experiencing intense emotions, including guilt and shame. She was struggling with her status as a killer. Lucy recognized that her behavior was wrong and realized that she had caused great harm. I think this note demonstrates how Lucy did not have much insight. She knew that she was driven to kill, but she did not understand why. She adopted the simple explanation of being evil, horrible, and awful. I find it curious that Lucy used the term, why me? Almost like her behavior was outside of her control. She was selected by a mysterious entity to be an evil killer through no fault of her own. She thought of herself not only as a perpetrator, but as a victim. Lucy failed to see her behavior as indicating the presence of mental health symptoms, although she did mention not being good enough. Perhaps Lucy had low self-esteem. Item number three. On a few occasions, Lucy attempted to kill the same victims repeatedly. Sometimes she achieved her goal, and other times the infants were saved by being moved to a different hospital. There may have been some type of personal component that contributed to Lucy's behavior. She did not view the infants equally. She became fixated on some of them for whatever reason. Lucy really wanted certain victims to be dead and was willing to take tremendous risks to achieve that goal. This behavior demonstrates a tendency to become obsessed. Item number four, Lucy engaged with the family members of some of her murder victims, telling them how sorry she was for their loss. After murdering one victim, she sent the family a sympathy card. Lucy used her cell phone to capture a photograph of that card before sending it. During one incident, Lucy had to be told more than once not to enter the room containing grieving parents. These parents were grieving the loss of a child who Lucy murdered. There was something about the grieving process that was attractive to Lucy. She appeared to be drawn to strong emotional experiences in general. To Lucy, it didn't matter if the emotions were positive or negative, as long as they were intense. By murdering children under her care, Lucy created intense negative emotional experiences that attracted the attention of everyone grieving family members, hospital staff, and eventually investigators. Initially, many people felt badly for Lucy and encouraged her by telling her that she was a good nurse. Lucy was being treated like a victim too, which is exactly what she wanted. There's this sense that Lucy thrived on frustration, despair, anguish, confusion, and grief. The suffering of others was exciting and fulfilling to her. She just could not get enough of that feeling. No amount of homicidal behavior could satisfy her. Item number five, what do I think happened in the case of Lucy Letby? This is just a theory, my opinion. One possibility in this case is that Lucy was suffering from something like factitious disorder imposed on another. This is also called Munchausen syndrome by proxy. This is a disorder where a caregiver intentionally induces, falsifies, or exaggerates manifestations of physical or mental health symptoms in a person who is under their care. Here are some of the typical characteristics of those who have the disorder. They have extensive knowledge of medical terminology. 
They are sadistic and enjoy seeing victims suffer. Their undesired behavior is persistent. It's rare that somebody with the disorder commits just one offense and then terminates their criminal career. They often present as overly attentive and attached to the victim, and they want to be viewed as a victim themselves. They love getting attention and sympathy for others. The motivation for a factitious disorder imposed on another is often conceptualized as unconscious. The individual doesn't have insight, but they do understand the wrongfulness of their behavior. They conceal their crimes because they do not want to face consequences. They know that they would be arrested and sent to prison. Another notorious killer nurse in Britain, Beverly Allett, was diagnosed with factitious disorder imposed on another. I'll talk about her case in a moment. One could argue that Lucy's behavior aligns with factitious disorder symptoms, but of course there's no way to know for certain if she actually has the disorder. There may be some other explanation which has nothing to do with mental health. Either way, I think it is reasonable to believe that Lucy killed because of the way it made her feel. She desired an emotional experience that could only come from killing the most vulnerable members of society from a position of tremendous trust. Lucy was self-centered, manipulative, sadistic, had a profound lack of empathy, and had little insight. She was willing to meet her needs at any cost. Item number six. As I mentioned, Beverly Allett was another notorious serial killer in Britain. Just like Lucy, Beverly was a nurse who killed children under her care. Beverly was convicted in 1993 on four charges of murder, three counts of attempted murder, and six counts of causing grievous bodily harm. She was sentenced to 13 terms of life in prison. She is still incarcerated, but was technically eligible for parole starting in 2021. Let's take a look at Beverly's history compared to Lucy's history, starting with the similarities. Both women had an interest in working as a nurse in a hospital unit which cared for children. Both were described as mildly attractive, although people said that Beverly was chronically overweight and made no effort to appear attractive, and both were convicted of murdering children under their care. Moving to the differences, Beverly had a long history of exaggerating and fabricating illnesses and injuries. At various times, she falsely claimed to have a stomach ulcer, a brain tumor, and other medical conditions. She even manipulated physicians into removing her appendix when the surgery was not necessary. She would stay with one physician for a while until they figured out what she was doing, then she would find another one. Lucy, on the other hand, did not have any history of bizarre behavior. She was described as normal. Beverly was considered a terrible nurse in just about every way. She repeatedly failed nursing examinations and missed about a hundred days of nursing school. Lucy was considered to be a competent nurse. Beverly tried to hide her crimes, but her homicidal behavior was obvious. Lucy did a much better job at hiding her crimes. Beverly eventually confessed to three of the murders. Lucy has not confessed. One key observation from comparing these two killers is that Lucy was more efficient and more deadly than Beverly. Lucy did not appear erratic, bizarre, or unusual. She was able to get along with her colleagues pretty well. In this way, Lucy Letby was a much more terrifying killer. Now moving to my final thoughts. Sometimes people desire emotions that originate from destructive acts. As long as a person does nothing to cause the destruction, this isn't necessarily problematic, but some people do not want to wait for a disaster to strike. They do something to actively cause the problem. Lucy was drawn to care for children, not because she had compassion for them, but because she loved the intense emotions that surrounded newborns. She wasn't interested in the positive emotions like hopefulness or joy, but rather Lucy was attracted to the grief, sorrow, and despair that resulted from tragic death. Those are my thoughts in the case of Lucy Letby. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.